Hi, this is Matt Lam. Welcome to another episode of Get Educated with Matt Lam. In today's episode, we will be discussing why the property market remains resilient and continues to boom despite a pandemic. Roll the trailer. So, why is the property market still booming despite the pandemic? It is attributed to five main reasons. Number one, demand and supply. Number two, the delay in construction and rising construction cost. Number three, market economical factors. Number four, cooling measures. And lastly, number five, learning from the past experience. First up, the demand and supply factors. This remain the most influential factor in the Singapore real estate market where we see despite having the major cooling measures in 2014, when the supply diminishes in 2017 and 2018, the prices recovered resulting in a peak resale demand where the government has to introduce cooling measures to decrease the rate of increment in terms of prices. So this is similar to what is happening in the current market right now where we are seeing a 6.6% increment year on year from 2020 to 2021. What is exactly happening is the unsold inventory has dropped to 20,000 units in the market right now. And this is causing consumers to experience what we call FOMO which is the fear of missing out where they are afraid that they will miss the boat or they cannot choose their choice unit. And secondly, the delay in construction and the rising construction cost. The delay in construction has caused many consumers to change their housing plans. Some have resorted to the option of buying a resale rather than waiting for BTOs. Some rather use the time that they wait for a BTO to purchase new developments in the market, followed by the rising construction cost. Many will see this as an opportunity to enter the market quickly to ride on the wave as well. As seen in the last land sales at Amokyo, where we see that the projected pricing after factoring in the land price as well as the construction cost, it is predicted that the development will be selling at 2,000 per square foot, similar to many city fringe and city properties pricing at the moment. Thus, this fueled the demand in the current market now. And thirdly, it is also driven by market economical factors such as low interest rates and hot money. What does hot money actually mean? It means printing of money. And based on the statistics that I've drawn out from the MAS recently, we see an influx of money supply into Singapore. Well, I'm sure that this money supply will somehow flow down the tiers to the consumers as well. What it actually means to Singaporeans is, Singaporeans are known to be good savers and have a good amount of funds sitting in the bank. With a huge money supply flowing into Singapore, it also means that their money within the bank is likely to depreciate. So the first Asian thing that we will probably do is also to purchase real estate or tangible assets to hedge against any inflation or depreciation in their money. Followed by the low interest rates that we are currently experiencing. All right, in the past, we were experiencing an interest rate of average 1.8%, but right now, we are going as low as 1.1%, and if you manage to get any promotional rates, even below 1.1% and probably about 1.05% thereabouts. Next, the cooling measures. The cooling measures has actually formed a safety net for the Singapore property market. The biggest difference between the past crises and the present crisis is the cooling measures. Without the cooling measures, I would definitely tell you not to enter the property market. But it has proven time and time again. With the cooling measures in place in Singapore, the property market has become very resilient and the prices have not tanked. Many expected the prices to actually decrease after the circuit breaker last year. But in fact, the prices have rebounded and we see a 6.6 .6 increment year on year to date. And lastly, learning from the past experience. In last year's circuit breaker, there were a few consumers that were brave enough to enter the market and mainly for three reasons. Number one, securing a good entry price. Number two, developers options and flexibility. And number three, securing a good exit plan. With a higher agency as our current unsold inventory has dropped to only 20,000 compared to circuit breaker times where we were at 27,000 units. 
We foresee the same trend happening where the volume of transactions increased tremendously after the circuit breaker. Therefore, we must ride on the renewed opportunity that we are going to experience right now in the next wave. Thank you for watching another episode of Get Educated with Matt Lam. Remember to like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel, Facebook page and Instagram page. Check out my TikTok channel at the link right below and I'll see you soon.